what else have we, what can we expect from you for the rest of the year into 2024? Uh, there's something very, very, very special um, being launched at the end of October, early November, in some ways build upon, um, you know, the C1 Bel Canto, um, which has been a transformational watch for the business. So uh, it's, it's going to be a bigger nothing. I really do. I think it's... <laughs> Once uh, again, Mike think... leaves me hanging. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to the Watch Gecko YouTube channel and Time to Unwind channel. Um, I'm here for part two of my catch up with Mike France, who very kindly joined us for a discussion about the 12 watch. And now we're going to have a general chat about all things Christopher Ward. Mike, hi again. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, it's a pleasure. Seems like uh, it was only yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> How time flies when you're having fun. Indeed, indeed. The fact indeed. we're wearing the same clothes, people will see when this is done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have changed. <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, trade secret, Mario does make me come down to the office with about three or four tops. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. I'll, remember, um, I'll remember for next time. <laughs> uh, now, obviously, we were chatting about the 12, which was wonderful. And people mm. can link back to that video and learn all about it. But just looking through mm. your website yesterday and today, there's lots of things which I thought were really interesting. Um, the mm -hmm. first thing I thought was, because we've not been able to review one yet, but I'm sure obviously between us we can sort that, is one of the uh, C60 Atoll series. Oh, now, yeah. yeah. The word yeah. Atoll conjures up an image to me which I'm sure it conjures up to everybody, which is something like out of a, an Ian Fleming novel. What was the inspiration behind the atoll, please? Um, s s simply um, flying over um, the Maldives. Um, <laughs> you, you know the, the Trident Pro 300 is a, is, a, is a huge success for us and a very important um, uh, watch for us. And in, in many ways, it goes right deep into the, the heritage of, of the Chris Ford brand. So we've always had... A really strong collection of dive watches, and the 300 is um, is the latest in that you know long line. We like to um, you know stir it up a bit occasionally, and um, uh, you know we've we've had uh, you know great success with bronze watches um, with different finishes on the on the dials, etc. As you approach um, summer, um, you know dive watches have a um, uh, have have a moment as well because uh, lots of people. Uh, even if they don't wear them on a regular basis, dust off their their their, uh, their dive watches mm -hmm. to take them on holiday and go swimming with them, even if they don't go scuba diving with them. And so, what um, what what better, in some ways, um, describes the sort of sense of freedom and enjoyment that a holiday gives than, you know, the sort of colours that one associates with, uh, you know, with a, a Pacific island or an Indian yeah. an island in the Indian Ocean. And so, atoll became a uh, a phrase that uh, and, a, and, a, and a line that we used um, for really creating watches that are inspired by the colours um, of of that sort of um, part of the world. Well, it's a great name. It's one of those names you think, why has somebody not used it already? It's a superb name. Now, I mean, looking at the dials, you've done some beautiful work on the dials. Um, mm, could you mm, give us an mm. indicator how that process is completed? I, I find it particularly noticeable, although there's the there's the, uh, the reef blue dial, which is obviously very sort of archetypal watch for that sort of genre. It's the grey dial that mm. really got my attention. The the shark white, as it were. The shark it? white, um, that's um, the phrase, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we're, we're I think to some extent we're, we're becoming um, well known for different versions of fume dials. Um, where you have a different depth of color at the at the outside and uh, it gradients towards the the inner and we just felt that that was um you know something that would um would work on 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 these particular watches um the process is quite long but it, it it's essentially you're spinning um dials whilst you're attaching paint and the level of paint changes as you go towards the center um so it's uh, it's not everybody it's it's quite a very skilled and skillful technique and um you know we've we've got a supplier of uh, dials who is has proven over the years to be really really um uh, excellent at it the um i think uh, another prime example of it would be the um the 12 ti which has a very dark foo made um, mm. outer um, moving towards the lighter colours in the centre. So it's uh, it's just something that we... I mean, we're not the only ones who do Fumé dials, but we probably, I think, have become quite recognised for them. And it just felt that it um, it fitted this particular design of watch. 
Well, I think it does because it seems somehow... Seems, it, we did a, a video quite recently with someone where we were talking about legibility on watches. And I drew particular yeah. reference to a Breitling. I'll come clean and say yeah, it. Yeah. a particular yeah. Breitling. It was the Colt <laughs> where they had a white dial, mm. white indices, white hands. And its legibility was at best questionable. And it seemed to mm-hmm. me to be flying in the face of everything that watch was supposed to do. So I'd imagine mm. that, I mean, and, and I, I can't stress enough how the, the, the shark finish one is, is, is different. Um, you, mm. I'm looking mm. at a close up of it on the laptop down in front of me now and legibility is superb, but that must in itself mm. be a little bit of a challenge to make sure you've got those right refractions and reflections and angles to make sure it is legible. Well, and particularly on a dive watch. I mean, if you I mean, we all know most, most people are not going to, um, uh, use a dive watch uh, whilst as the only implement um, they'll have whilst um, scuba diving. I, 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 I scuba dive and um, I wear a computer, but I also wear um, a Trident. Um, so it's a nice backup watch, but I mean, it would be absolutely useless if it wasn't, um, if it wasn't very legible. So the, all of the Trident collection, one of the key design mores if you will is is it has to be extraordinarily legible so it doesn't it won't pass go if legibility isn't uh, right up there so readability legibility call it what you will is is one of the design elements that goes into i i think it should go into every watch but particularly a dive watch mm. um um you know uh, if you went back 40 50 years um you know that would be clearly a matter of life and death absolutely um, so um you know so uh it's so a best uh best you vote for life <laughs> uh, every time every time now <laughs> question for you random question for you here yep as you click on oh, the watch you <laughs> as you click on the watch it brings up one of your high-end videos which we all love to watch with the nice narration voice over <laughs> and the wonderful yeah, yeah. drone photography did I imagine yeah. or did I not the Christopher Ward logo <laughs> on a coral reef as the snorkeler is going over it? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you absolutely did, and and whilst um, you may you may even think that we CGI'd that in. Um, well, frankly, I, I did. I can, <laughs> I can honestly say that it was just one of those happy accidents that occurred. Um, <laughs> And we, I couldn't believe it either. I mean, it was like, what? Um, uh, and yet it was a complete accident. And uh, wow. the, 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 the photographer, the videographer couldn't believe it, uh, was so excited to, uh, to show it to the, the, the first rushes to us. And we thought, we thought like you, that, oh, that must be, that must, oh, come on. That's, no, absolutely, genuinely, uh, that was the case. And uh, so uh, I'm, I'm pleased you spotted it because it, it brought a smile to all of our faces as well. It so, would have uh, made the day worthwhile. We will almost certainly, as we're talking, have put up a freeze, <laughs> freeze frame, with your permission, a freeze frame of that video yeah. so that people can see what we're talking Please about. Please do. Please do. Because but, it is yeah, no, it was re- magic moment. <laughs> it was true. It was, it was. I'm not sure it'll ever happen again, but it was, it was, it was terrific, terrific. Right, now, yeah. if it happens again, I'm going to, I'm going to say you faked it. No, no, then, then you can doubt me. Then you can, no, then, 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 then take me to court. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've, as you know, we've, we've been putting quite a few reviews up of your watches over the last few weeks. And there was one that really resonated with me because as, as we've spoken off camera, I spent an awful lot of my life living in, in, in the desert sands. Mm. And that was the mm, C65 mm. June white sand. Um, for, mm. For my money, mm-hmm. um, the, the greatest genre of watch in the world is the field watch because I've used them in some of the most inhospitable places in the world. And mm. I found it to be an exceptionally good field watch, even if that was not necessarily the, you know, the manufacturing intention. It really worked for me. But mm. to my mind, there's just not enough desert-inspired watches. So I was so excited to see it. What, what really was the inspiration behind that watch? The roots of the watch um, are in the uh, the Aquitaine that we had launched um, a sort of seven or eight months prior to the June, which was a which was an out and out dive watch, of course, a retro dive watch, if you like. But Aquitaine named um, named after the southwest region of France um, for a number of different reasons. But um, um, when we came to the June. Um, and we wanted to, we wanted a sort of um, 
a different sort of take on a field watch. There are, as you rightly say, there are some superb field watches out there. I mean, our own um, our own Sandhurst um, of is, I think, a, a a classic, a really classic field watch. And if we're talking legibility, here's another example where a watch has to have great legibility. Um, but we wanted something that had a, a little bit of a twist um, to it. Um, and the Dune, which is named after the Dune de Pilat, the Dune de Pilat is the a highest sand dune in Western Europe. Um, and the Dune de Palat actually happens to be in Aquitaine, would you believe? It's 30 minutes south of um, Bordeaux. Um, we sent people up it to test the watch and we videoed that. And the video, uh, some a couple of influencers um, did a fantastic job um, wearing the watch on the, the Dune de Palat. Uh, which is, uh, if you've ever been there, is a is a hell of a hell of a climb. <laughs> Don't go there. I've if never you're not been, fit. but I've seen photos. But yeah, I, I can I can vouch for the fact that dune climbing is 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 no fun on the legs. No, it's certainly not. Um, the fact that um, the dune the uh, dune de Pilar, uh was in Aquitaine and that the dune itself takes its name from the dune de Pilar, you had to have a white sand version. And um, the white sand version um, is by far the bestseller. Mm. Um, and so, um, so you know, yes, it's a it's a it's a feel watch with a twist. But you don't get there aren't too many watches um, that go that route in terms of color. And I, I, I think it works extremely well. And possibly because oh, it's absolutely. it's a rarity. It, people have been attracted to it. Oh, it's it's it was the one I think that took the biggest trick in the office. And as as obviously as you know, we're 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 slightly um, uh, we're known to change straps over in the office, and we found it to be <laughs> one of you the are. most fascinating. <laughs> to put different straps on. It just seemed to take anything you threw at it. Yeah, it was yeah, so yeah, versatile yeah, yeah. and it was a wonderful yeah. bit of kit, wonderful bit of kit. Um, so, I mean, you briefly mentioned the Sandhurst there, which was actually going to be one of the, new, the next things I was going to talk about. Um, is there anything new planned at all on the military ranges? Any, any new models, Ye- any different changes? Mm, yes, we've got a new model, um, on the blocks at the moment, we're um, we're just in the process of uh, working with the um, the MOD on um, making sure that the detailing is is spot on. Um, but that will be released um, hopefully in the early part of next year. So it's a, a bit of a, a bit of a departure for us. I think it'll surprise a few people. And um, um, so far, I mean, the the MOD and the the forces themselves have loved it. So. Um, touch wood uh it comes through the way we want it so that will be that will be a first quarter launch you're going to leave me dangling 24 aren't you i'm af- i'm afraid so because because i mean you <laughs> I know understand. it's the mod and you, you don't mess about with the mod <laughs> i wouldn't know you know you were, yeah <laughs> I, I wouldn't know i want to keep my pension i wouldn't no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, me too. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, looking at the military watches, I mean, obviously you've got the, the, the sort of the classic, um, the Cranwell, the Sandhurst um, designs. I'm very curious mm. because it's, if I'm being completely honest with you, Mike, it's the one watch in your collection that's really, really jumped out at me is the Limpstone, the C60 Limpstone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and Be- why has it jumped out? It's because I, it has that almost, dare I say, black carbon special operations look which is something that i am a huge fan of in watches the only watch i've ever helped design for our own people was one based on my own extensive workings with special operations units um i I Ah, used to go to an event every year in in jordan called castle tech which was where the special forces compete against one another for um uh, it's like a special forces olympics is the best way to look at it and i've more than anything rather than where um, bullets were flying i was more interested in what people were wearing on their left wrists so you yeah yeah (laughs) and john and who's the the head of gakota said to me what uh, what's your favorite spec ops watch and i said well to be honest i don't have one it's kind of up here Mm, so we mm. we made one which is the phalanx but this watch to me really, really speaks to me. And I just wonder because of its, it's so diverse to everything else you make. And it's one of the few Christopher mm. Wards I would look at. And apart from the, the hour hand, I might not necessarily think it was you. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious how, how, mm-hmm. how popular is that? Uh, very popular. Um, and uh, it, uh, it, it also, the video that we, we have with it is, is also one of our most 
popular um, social media videos. Um, and it's not difficult to understand why, in a sense, because the watch generally and genuinely was designed in conjunction with the Royal Marines, um, who's uh, who are based, as you will know, at um, the training facilities at Limston mm. uh, in Devon. And um, so we talked to them about what sort of watch that they would um they would really appreciate and you know clearly special ops um you don't want light um bouncing off your your case so it uh it, it had to be blacked out you know the the dial is is it's a carbon dial um so it had to be as light as it possibly could be um it had to be accurate so it needed to be a chronometer uh, and then you know there is the internal compass to be honest you need a bit of a uh, a degree in to 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 know how to use but once you um once once you once you've uh, passed muster um it, it is actually a, quite a useful uh, quite a useful tool challenge um, accepted and so there you go so uh, i'll drop you in a field somewhere uh, in the brecon beacons and uh, and you can find your way back um using only only the limpston as uh, as your guiding light so um uh, as long as I'm not with you, I'll be. Well, you'll be fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, because I, I always forget how to use it. Um, so um, yeah, so it was in conjunction with them. So it has those sorts of um, tweaks and differences, perhaps that uh, mm. we wouldn't necessarily have got to without uh, the input of the uh, the Royal Marines. Correct me if I'm wrong. The dial would make each watch unique. Mm, yeah, everyone is different. Yeah, everyone is different. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. By by we, nature of the uh, yeah. the 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 composite that we're using, yeah. Okay. Which uh, is again a nice little touch, isn't it? It's a sort of um, you know, it's just a, uh, it's just a, another small element um, that that people really appreciate. I, I think that's. I think it's it's a. I would argue it's a bigger element than maybe you might <laughs> realize because there is something beautiful about having something unique in a watch, and that swirling pattern. It kind of reminded me of smoke and there's something slightly stealthy and mysterious about the way the smoky pattern appears on the watch it really fitted into the ethos you were trying to create with the watch to my mind when i was examining it in minute detail this morning i thought yeah it's it really as a product that yeah. really works yeah it's, um, a, it's a nice watch so what else would you say is um what, what have you got planned say for the rest of the year is there anything you can you can open up to us apart from the mod watch which i know you'd, you could tell me but you'd have to kill me what what can we yeah 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 what what else have we, um, what can we expect from you for the rest of the year into 2024 um, um i can't be too specific but um uh there's something very 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 special um being launched at the end of october early november um which um I think is 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 again going to um create a lot of interest. Um it's uh it's using uh, one of our own uh, modules. Um it's a it's interpreting that in a very unique way. Um and it's um it's it's going to be a big enough thing. I really do. I think it's once uh, again. Mike think, leaves me hanging. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I would tell you, but I'd, I'd, that'd kill me. You know. I mean, it's, uh, uh, well, it's, hang on, um, wait a minute. I think uh, we ended up killing both of us at one point there. We don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll 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 just get the mod in here. You know. Um, so let's 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 have it over with. You know. Um, uh, no. So I mean, the, it's it's a it's a very special watch, and then we're already well. You know, we're we're twenty four is. Our twentieth anniversary year of the founding of the business, and we've got, um, as you might imagine, one or two surprises oh, up our sleeve sure, for, yeah. uh, for for twenty four. So, I mean, some of the things that are on the blocks at the moment are um, are incredibly exciting, and you know, some of them, in some ways, build upon um, you know the C the C one Bel Canto, yeah. um, which has been a transformational watch for the business. So, uh, these are you know. As I think it was the Chinese who said, we live in exciting times. But um, uh, whether it was Mao or somebody else who said it, um, I don't know. But um, we certainly are living in exciting times at Chris Ward at the moment. And that seems like a perfect, perfect place to draw a line. Mike, hopefully you'll keep Watch Gecko abreast of all the changes because we want to write about them. We want to talk about them. Um, hopefully we can get you you'll back. You'll be on the, the first to again. know, Richard. You'll be the first to know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> mm. <laughs> Maybe number two. <laughs> well, no, no, whatever. You're always, you're always, you're always in the first batch. Let's be honest. You know, no, we. Uh, it, uh, I'll take that. As soon as we can, we will. As soon yeah. as we can, we'll tell you. Um, we'll, we'll and as that. we always do, but and we are, we are genuinely always grateful for the coverage you you give us. It's. Uh, I don't know. This brand wouldn't be anywhere like where it is today without the sort of support we have from people like yourself and uh, and businesses like Watch Gecko. It's uh, it's been fantastic, and spreading the word is uh, is uh, is something that's obviously dear to my heart. And um, through guys like yourself, we're able to do that uh, in ways that 20 years ago we could never have dreamed of. So, really, thank you. And whenever I'm always, as you know, always. Uh, Always very happy to uh, to come and chat about our watches with you. Well, uh, that's really lovely of you to say that, Mike. Thank you so much on behalf of everybody in the team. Thank you. I really, I really appreciate that, and um, oh, I really look forward to our next really chat. Likewise. Cheers. Thank you very much, Mike. Take care.